In this lesson, I'll show you how to state the restrictions for a rational polynomial. The question reads, simplify and state any restrictions on the variables. When it comes to rational polynomials, you want to pay attention to the denominator. Both of these denominators cannot equal to zero. So what I will do is write down x plus three cannot equal to zero, and x to the power of two minus nine cannot equal to zero. And I'll solve for x as if they were equations. To solve for x here, we bring this positive three over and we get x cannot equal to negative three. And to solve for x here, we bring this negative nine over where we get x to the power of two cannot equal to positive nine. And then square rooting both sides, we get x cannot equal to plus minus three. So, so far, before we have even simplified, we know that the restrictions are negative three and positive three but there may be more restrictions as you simplify this expression. Before we combine these in order for us to simplify, this expression is factorable. Notice that x to the power of two minus nine is a difference of squares. And I knew that because both of these are perfect squares and they're being subtracted. So I can break down x to the power of two minus nine as x minus three and x plus three, both in parentheses. Therefore, this expression is what you see right here. In order to combine these, you multiply the denominators together. So I will be multiplying x plus three, this one, with this denominator, giving me, and I'll show my work underneath here, x plus three, that's this one, and that's being multiplied to these two. These two factors are the same, so you can write it down as x plus three to the power of two if you like, and now, that we have a common denominator, I will take this denominator and multiply it to seven. So I have seven times x plus three, and I'll take this denominator, this one, and multiply it to the two. So I have two times that expression. What's really interesting now is if you look at the numerator, you have a common factor of x plus three. So I can factor that out. I can common factor just the numerator out for x plus three, and if I pull out x plus three from this term, I get two x minus three, and pulling out x plus three from here, I get plus seven, and the rest stays the way it is. The denominator has not changed throughout the process, so there's no need to keep checking for any new restrictions. But sometimes the denominator does change depending on the operations that are being used. So you do need to check the restrictions along the way. In this case, you don't need to. Notice that this factor and this factor will cancel out. So your final answer, when you write this down simplified, is this as your numerator over this as your denominator. Let's look at example B. To make this video short and quick, I'll not show you the simplification, but I will show you the restrictions. So if I want to find the restrictions for this, we will look at the denominators, and specifically, we have three x, y over here. All of that cannot equal to zero. If I want to isolate for y, I divide both sides by three x. And zero divided by anything makes zero. Therefore, y cannot equal to zero. And the same thing can be said about x. So if I had divided both sides by three y instead, then x cannot equal to zero either. Similarly, if I set y to the power of two cannot equal to zero for this denominator, and square rooted both sides to isolate for y, I would end up with y cannot equal to zero again. So my restrictions at this point are both x and y cannot equal to zero, like I said, to save time, I will not simplify this, but if you want me to simplify it, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll gladly show you how it's done. Now for question C, this one's way more complicated than the previous two. This denominator cannot equal to zero and it is a difference of squares, just keep that in mind for later. So if I solve for X by bringing that over, I end up with this step and then I square root both sides where I get x cannot equal to both plus minus one. And you're going to have to do this for all of these. For here, if I do the same thing, it really helps if you know how to solve equations quickly. So if I bring this over, I get positive four on the right side, and if I square root both sides, I get plus minus 
two. So far, I have four restrictions. If I set this as not equal to zero, I would need to factor this quadratic. And this quadratic is factorable through trial and error, that technique, which I've shown in previous videos. So what two numbers multiply to two and add to three? That combination is positive two and positive one. So setting this not equal to zero, I should get x cannot equal to negative two, which I found earlier already. Remember this one? So I don't need to repeat it. And x cannot equal to negative one, which I've found earlier as well. Now, if you simplify this expression using bed mass, so multiplying these two first and then taking that product and dividing it by that, you might find even more restrictions. In fact, once you do multiply these and then divide by this rational polynomial, you will have to reciprocate that rational polynomial, meaning that this will end up becoming your denominator and that will end up becoming your numerator. Therefore, x minus five should also be considered. I won't be simplifying the whole thing because it will take a while. So I'll just show you that another restriction would be that this cannot equal to zero. So bringing that negative five over, I get x cannot equal to positive five. And that is how you state the restrictions for a rational polynomial. If you have any further questions, use the comment section below and I'll gladly help you out. Thanks for watching.